All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am doing a little bit of an equipment video. So I recently got a couple of questions asking Zach, what is that tan box that we see in the background of all of your car reviews? I have two responses to that. First of all, uh, I'm too lazy to move it. It's the honest truth. Uh, but the second thing is that that is what holds and carries my equipment when I go on film shoots. So today I'm going to be doing a full breakdown on all of my equipment I use for my car reviews and pretty much any other shoot. So without further ado, this is the tan box in question. This is actually purchased at Harbor Freight. Uh, I will leave it in the description below as well as anything else I can find equipment wise. And it's a essentially a ripoff of a Pelican case. Pelican makes really good film cases uh, for cameras. They're very heavy duty. You could throw them out of an airplane and you'll be fine. Um, so this is the $60 knockoff version. Those are like $300. And the only main difference I can find is that the Pelican cases have like netting inside. So you could like stick little stuff up top. This does not, but has done everything else I need it to. And I have slowly been sticker bombing it uh, in stickers that people actually give me. Um, so if I ever meet up with you, I'd love to get a sticker or I'm in the works of setting up a PO box so people can send me things um, and stickers will be some of that. So like on the front here, I have a bunch of Yeti stuff from the big friggin' bottle actually, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, my RX-7, I have a couple local pipe fitter unions my friends gave me. Um, and then switching around the back here, this is Boosted John's Honda Civic. Uh, this is my friend's FC RX-7. Alex, big fan of the channel. He's been in so many vlogs. You guys have seen this thing um, a bunch on the channel. I made this, the FC, the FD, and the FB. I made those. That's the big freaking bottle. I've ordered a bunch of stuff from Sticker Mule, uh, GoPro, the Stay Lucky. That's from our Spec Miata. That was like gummy bears were our little good luck charm. This is just a brewing company I went to. Uh, the Peterson Auto Museum. Shout out to Los Angeles. More Yeti stuff and things like that. So that's the box itself. It is waterproof. It's pretty much shockproof and it opens like so. Bada bing, bada boom. And then as you'll see, a lot of the equipment is actually missing because I'm using it to film this video. So compartment number one right here, this little foam, which it's really nice pick apart foam. You can customize it to be whatever you want. Right here would be my camera, which I'm actually using to film this video. It's a Canon SL3 with a 24 millimeter pancake lens on it, which I like. Any scenery shots, shots of the car, that aren't me talking are from that camera with that lens. And then for the thumbnails, usually I'll use this Canon 55 to 250 millimeter lens. Um, and those super long shots where like the background is really blurry, that's what this is used for. I really only use it a couple times per shoot. So speaking of which, the second little compartment is here. This is the 55 to 250 millimeter lens from Canon. Gotta have a little bit of gold bond on you at all times for those long shoot days, especially in the heat and especially in Florida. Then right here we have my GoPro Hero 9 Black. This is what I shoot all of the interior stuff with in the car reviews, backseat reviews, trunk reviews. Everything is shot on here. I usually keep a 64 gigabyte SD card in here and I have probably five or six of those um, that I shuffle through. I like this. Um, it does have some overheating issues and right now it's having an issue where it resets the time and date every time you turn on the GoPro. So all my files are kind of jumbled up if you sort them by date, um, which is kind of annoying. Not the end of the world. I do love this thing and it's it's been great so far and I only started using this at the beginning of 2021. Here we have a baggie. Um, this is full of stickers that I give out to everyone whose car I review here in 2021. It just says shooting cars review E 2021. Next year, the design will change. And whenever I review your car in 2022, you'll get a different sticker. Uh, it's something that people can look forward to. And it's kind of to reward people that allow me to review multiple cars over multiple years. You know, I have a couple people in my Rolodex that I've filmed their cars over the last five, six years, um, which is really, really rewarding. And I sort of wanted to reward them um, in that way. I, I wanted to make challenge coins, but they were way too expensive for like just kind of a, a throwaway gift. So I settled on stickers and I'll, I'll have something designed for 2022. Next up, this is my GoPro suction cup. This is actually a GoPro official suction cup. Um, I don't run with anything less. I've tried other suction cups. They're not nearly as good. Um, GoPro knows how to make a good suction mount. However, this is only my second one. My first one lasted 
10 years I went with it before it actually broke when I was filming the modified Subaru Impreza that had been turned into a truck. Um, I actually broke it on that shoot, unfortunately. So this is the second one. They no longer make the old style one. It's okay. It's decently low profile and things like that, but I, I love it and I can't leave home without that. That's one of the most important pieces. Right here, this is where my microphone would be. So let me get this out of the way because I'm actually using the microphone right now. One downside of this case, it's kind of loud, but I do love this. I chuck this into the back of my car. I have yeeted it many places um, and it, it protects the gear really well. So this I'm gonna talk about um, actually while I am using it. This is a Zoom H1N receiver. I like it because it's nice and small. It'll fit in any cup holder and it records really, really nice. And then that's going to a lapel mic that is right here. Uh, that is a Rode, I, th I believe, to-go lapel mic, um, which they used to sell at Best Buy. I used to pick them up at Best Buy because I have a habit of breaking them, but they no longer sell it at Best Buy, so I believe I had to get it on Amazon. So that's it for the main equipment, but two other things I wanted to mention. So this is my big freaking bottle for 2021. It is a Yeti Rambler. Uh, again, all this will be in the description. Um, this was actually a gift to me by my good friend Madison, and I had been looking for a giant water bottle to test the cup holders in. The idea for the big friggin' bottle spans back into the middle of last year, um, but I only put it in place at the start of January because I like to sort of categorize my reviews. I like to be able to look at a review and tell which year it's from. And the big friggin' bottle was the new introduction for 2021. I don't know if it'll stay. I don't, I'm thinking about next year maybe swapping out the big friggin' bottle to something different. Whatever that might be, I'm not quite sure yet. But yeah, it's a Yeti Rambler and it has, I never showed this in the video, whoops. It has the chug top, which like mimics like a regular plastic water bottle you'd buy at the store, um, which is a big game changer for me. I'm not someone that drinks a lot of water um, and I've definitely been trying to get better at it. Uh, and that chug top really makes a difference. Um, I think this water bottle has done me a lot of good. And like I said, this is my regular water bottle. I went to the Indiana Dunes yesterday and I brought this water bottle with, I was not filming. Um, I was with family and so people are like, oh, it's so heavy or, you know, whenever I bring it along, they're like, oh, you actually drink out of that. Yeah, this, this is just my water bottle. Um, I, I, I don't, while I use it for a prop, it's also not a prop. It's legitimately like my water bottle. The last thing I wanted to mention for the reviews is my clothing. Um, I switch the t-shirt every year and next year I'm going to have a different t-shirt. I'm starting to work on that right now. But two articles of clothing I wanted to talk about are my pants and my shoes. Mainly pants. I try to avoid jeans. I'll wear joggers if I'm very comfortable with the owner or dealership. Um, I'll usually try to wear khaki shorts. That's actually what I'm wearing right now um, just to look decently presentable um, and still stay comfortable. The reason I try to avoid jeans is unless they're super well washed, they can sometimes leave a little bit of blue tint on the seats. I remember I drove a Tesla uh, Model S P100D and the owner was a big fan of wearing jeans and his white seat was a light blue. Um, and so that made me realize of, oh, this might actually, what I wear might actually affect it. I, di I didn't damage the seat, but I, it made me realize that maybe I possibly could. And I also used to work at a car wash where we had special pants that had no buttons on them. They had elastic Velcro belts. Um, and that was so if we leaned up against the car, we wouldn't scratch them. Um, unintentionally, of course, we wouldn't purposefully lean on the cars. And so I try to employ that too, which is when the joggers come and play um, during the winter months. And so if I lean up against a car trying to get a shot of a hood scoop or something like that, um, I'm not going to potentially scratch it. Of course, that's never, never my uh, goal is, is, you know, I want to return the car in the same condition, if not better to the owner. Last but not least is my shoes. These I wear, whew, these I wear on every single film shoot, unless it's like an emergency something. I have worn these for the last probably year and a half, two years, and I've actually gone through two sets of them. They are Vans ultra range, meaning they have thicker soles, uh, more tread on the soles, but they're nice, airy, and light. You can see my fingers through here. I mean, these are in no way, shape, or form water resistant or anything like that, but they're comfortable enough, but I can also, when I'm driving manual, uh, I can really feel the clutch 
uh, with this left shoe here, which is very, very important. Uh, I remember I had these, I loved them, and then I got a pair of Reeboks for last summer and I was driving my Miata, back when I had a Miata, and I could not feel the clutch pedal at all. It had such like a airy, pillowy bottom to it. Um, and I do have new running shoes now. I have a Nike uh, bippity boppity boopities. So I, I'll never wear those for reviews. I, I just can't do it. So I'm always wearing these Vans because pedal feel is very important. And also when you're driving, like today I was driving an $80,000 Hellcat, I, I want to be able to do everything properly and feel comfortable. And these help me feel comfortable in cars like that um, so I can be as precise as possible and not hurt the car at all. So I hope this video was somewhat informative. That's all the equipment I use. Oh, I forgot, actually, I, I use a Amazon Basics tripod. I've gone through three of them. I keep buying them, they're $12 uh, or something like that. And uh, they're great, they're super lightweight. They're not the best made, so they do end up breaking after about a year of use. But 12 bucks a year is, is fine because I went to the store to go buy new tripods and they were like, oh yeah, oh, so we have one for 400 and one for 350 and I'm like, mm, I'm good, thanks though. So, that's all my equipment. I edit on an iMac. That's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video, this nice little behind the scenes of my car reviews. That's all my equipment that I use. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more questions about my equipment, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you uh, if you have any questions. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.